Hey guys, Eric here with Southwest.io Fishing. Um, so Idaho is growing a ton. It's growing fast. We got people moving here from all over the country wanting to come here and, and live the lifestyle that we do. Um, I, I don't blame them. Uh, with one of the best urban fisheries in the country, uh, where it's, it's pretty attractive. Uh, we got the Boise River running right through town. We've got these city ponds that are stocked. Uh, we even got one downtown with a, with a sturgeon in it. So uh, you can't really blame them. Uh, between those those newbies and the the Idaho residents that uh, that maybe just haven't learned to fish or haven't taken the time to really give it any effort, I wanted to kind of take this opportunity to to break it down. Um, while you can find the information on how to fish, you can find it all over the internet. I wanted to make it available to to the Southwest Idaho fishing people, to our community, um, and kind of give you the uh, the nuts and bolts of what works best in in the area. Now a lot of the basics are going to be pretty across the board for the throughout the country um, but it's the foundation to to good to good practices and good tactics so um, I, the intent of the video is to be able to give you guys enough confidence to walk into a, a tackle shop and be able to get the stuff you need and get out and go fishing. Uh, I'd recommend you go by the, the, the tackle shops that have supported Southwest Idaho fishing in the past um, Howard's Tackle Shop in Nampa, Angler's Habitat in Caldwell and Meridian, and Kokanee Tackle in Boise. So anywhere you are in the Treasure Valley, you've got a, a swift supporting tackle shop near you. So um, this is, these are my recommendations. This isn't the, the tried and true only way to do things, the, the be all end all. They're just my recommendations. They are based on my experience, my knowledge, and the feedback from the the, uh, the Facebook group. So you may have a way that's better than my way. Please share it. Um, you know that's part of the it's part of the idea of the of the the Swift community is everybody sharing sharing ideas and whatnot. So uh, once you decide you're ready to to learn how to fish, first thing you're going to need to do is take care of the legal stuff. Uh, there is a small amount of legality with fishing. Um, the biggest one being buying your fishing license. So the money goes from the fishing licenses, the money goes primarily to conservation of our fisheries um, and, our, and our hunting grounds. Um, so, so know that that money is going to good use. You can get these fishing licenses at a lot of the big box stores, anywhere that sells tackle, uh, a lot of the local shops. If you're not sure if they, don't, if they sell them or not, just give them a call. Uh, just double check. Some of the, some of the local guys uh, don't, don't do licenses. Uh, yet. So um, while you're there getting your, your license, make sure, make sure, make sure you get these guys. These are the regulations for fishing in Idaho. Um, this these set of rules changes from just about every body of water between how many fish you can keep, uh, what time frame you can keep them, if you can use barbs, if you can use bait. That all varies from body of water to body of water, um, as well as the time frame. These regulations are good until the end of 2018. At that point, new regulations will be printed and they'll be available and they could have different rules for maybe that body of water you've been fishing forever. It could They could change. So um, if, if you don't have a copy of the regulations on you, you're wrong. Um, I've got a copy in my truck. I've got a copy in the wife's rig. Um, I went online and downloaded it from Fishing Games website and I've got it available on my phone even if I don't have coverage. So for those places that you're that you're going out, like um, I used it last time, Middle Fork of the Boise. I wasn't sure if we were allowed barbs or not, so I pulled it up on my phone, even though I didn't have coverage, and got the regulations. So highly, highly recommended. So the cost of the uh, the licenses as of now, I'm gonna go ahead and put those put those up here. And while you're reading it, the only thing that's kind of not really well known is that. So if you're under the age of 14, you don't need a license to fish in Idaho. But if you're a non-resident person under 14, you got to be with somebody who does have a license. And normally each angler would be allowed their own bag limit uh, to take home. You know, if the body of water allows six trout, then each person's allowed to take home six trout. If you don't have a license, so if you're under 14 and you're a non-resident, that person you're fishing with it's his or her bag limit so you guys can combined only take home six fish if that hope that makes hope that makes sense so 
Um, there's additional permits you can get to supplement the license. Um, a two pole permit to uh, to be allowed to fish two rods at once. You can get a steelhead and salmon permit to go after the big ocean run boys. Um, so those are all available at the uh, at the same same locations you get your licenses. So and again, just to reiterate, check the regs. The regulations have all the rules. They've got how to identify species, um, what species you can't take out of the water, what species you can't take home. Uh, it's got it's got all the information in it. So. Once you get that stuff taken, uh, taken, uh, taken care of, you gotta start looking at gear. Gear can be very, very intimidating for somebody that's just getting into the sport. With how many options there are, um, it can be, it can be kind of scary. So uh, I'd like to kind of give my recommendations on some some great starter stuff. Uh, the most important piece of equipment: your rod and reel. So here is a spinning rod and reel. So you can get these combos. Well, not these combos, but you can get a starter combo for uh, 20 to 50 bucks. Um, I recommend a spinning reel just because they're they're easier to use, they're easier to maintain, and even after you've been fishing for for years, you can still. I've been fishing for a long time, and I'm still using mainly a spinning rod. So, um, highly recommended. You want to get one to start off with that's about six, maybe six and a half feet, and I recommend a medium to fast action basically the action is how far how easy the uh, the rod bends they've all got their their benefits and their and their downsides the the slower the heavier actions are the uh, the, the stiffer rods more like a like a broomstick uh, allows you to cast farther allows you to cast uh, heavier stuff heavier baits heavier rigs the but they're not as, a, as sensitive to to takes to bites uh, and thing and things like that. On the other side, the the lighter ones are a little bit flimsier, and they allow you to be a lot more sensitive in the water to to different to different things, to the bites and whatnot. So, so the rod and reel combos generally come with line. A lot of them do. Um, you're more than welcome to to keep the line. I myself don't. Um, I lost one fish on stock line and forever have blamed that line and replaced it. It's probably just fine. You're probably you're probably taking off and putting on the same stuff, if that makes sense. Uh, it's probably the same quality. So, um, when it comes to line, I recommend a, a six-pound fluorocarbon is the the line I recommend. It's a good all-around line. It's going to go ahead and take care of the majority of your trout and your bass and your crappie and bluegill and whatever you want to catch. Um, I've seen six-pound line bring in 40 pound flathead catfish so I mean it'll take care of majority of the uh, of the fish so once you got your line taken care of uh, you're gonna need some terminal tackle terminal tackle is defined as the stuff you put on your line so um, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of that and we're gonna do that with my super high-tech uppy up close and personal angle so uh, let's take a look all right so the first piece of gear we're gonna talk about are your tools. There's a couple of tools you're going to absolutely want to have in your tackle box. Uh, the first of which being a set of needle nose pliers. Now you're going to find that you'll need, you'll use your needle nose pliers for a ton of stuff. Uh, from clipping line to removing hooks, uh, hopefully just from the fish. Um, or you can look at getting some, some of these fancy special made for fish set here they got kind of an angle here at the end uh, to help reach down in uh, in a fish's mouth and a, a little a little kite here at the end to, to help grab onto hooks but uh, your, your regular needle nose pliers will absolutely work just fine um, harbor freight sears wherever you want to go uh, second piece I'm gonna recommend is a knife that's a knife uh, it doesn't have to be a good knife doesn't have to be an expensive knife. This one doesn't even have a tip. Seen, seen better days. But you're probably your second most used piece of uh, piece of gear. Uh, when it comes to actual terminal tackle, uh, we're going to go ahead and move down the down the line here. First piece, probably some weights. So here we have your standard run-of-the-mill split shots. So they come in a package. I'll show the package probably right right here. 
Uh, and they come in different sizes and you get a ton of them so you can kind of adjust on the line based on based on how many you want to use and how big you want them and how you know whatever uh, they're completely customizable and they've got little fins a lot of them have little fins on the back to where you can actually unpinch them and use them again um, or if you put too many on you can take a couple off without having to to clip your line and starting over second piece one of my favorites little snap swivel so what this snap swivel is going to do is it's going to allow your gear to stay in the water longer uh, which in turn means more fish uh, so you're going to tie this to the end of your line and then from here you can hook on um, a hook or a spinner or a lure or a crankbait you know whatever you want to use uh, it, it saves you from having to cut off and, and retie uh, whatever you want to uh, to switch up to uh, it's designed to to swivel it's called a snap swivel so it uh, if you have a, a spinner or you have something that actually has some action it doesn't twist up your line it just uh, it just swivels here so uh, highly recommended next thing are your hooks so these come in a uh, in a package of this one's got six and I recommend a size six as well the size six will allow you to to catch most of the fish. If you're going after uh, if you're going after some bluegill, you're going to want to step it down a little bit. Uh, but this will catch 90% of the of the fish. So these fit these these hooks excuse me have a uh, have a couple of barbs on them. They've got one at the point to help keep in the fish's mouth, and they've got a couple of barbs here at the back on the shank, and that's going to allow the softer baits to stick on the hook better. It's got some line that's pre-snelled onto the hook. And it might be tough to see. Uh, and then it goes up and makes a loop up here. And that allows you to easily tie on to directly to your main line or on your snap swivel. Um, so it's just uh, kind of a convenience thing. After the hooks, you've got to put some bait on it. Um, while I recommend if you're just starting out, go get some worms. There's, there's nothing in Idaho, to my knowledge, that you can't catch on worms. From little crappie to, you know, 12-foot sturgeon, they all eat worms. But they don't keep very well. Trust me. Ask my wife. Sometimes they get left in your tackle box. Uh, so I, the next best thing, in my opinion, is going to be some salmon eggs. Uh, they're, they're nice and um, preserved, so they keep for a long time. Um, or your power baits. There's a million different varieties. These guys just happen to be on top of my box. They're uh, just some eggs as well. They come in eggs, dough that you kind of just pinch on your hook, um, pellets. You know, there's there's a ton of different options for for baits. Next, are going to be some spinners. I really enjoy spinners. I'm more of a active fisherman. Um, I, I like the cast and retrieve and not the not the sit and wait kind. So I prefer this guy here in the middle. This is a blue fox spinner. So it's got a bell shaped design here in the center and then it's got a, um, a blade that spins around it once once the lure is moving. Now you can get them all kinds. I think these guys are panther martins. Uh, but I find the blue fox is always spinning. You don't have to you don't have to jerk your rod to try to get the the panther martins to to spin. Uh, they're just always working. Uh, you will not find me on the river fishing a spinning rod without a chartreuse blue fox. These are my absolute go-to lure. I've got oh, six or seven of them in my tackle box, so. Um, so I'm never without. After you figure out kind of how you want to fish, what you want to fish with, you just need to decide if you're going to need a bobber. Um, there's a ton of different options with bobbers. There's round bobbers and stick bobbers and lighted bobbers and big bobbers and small bobbers. So, uh, you know, use, use your discretion. The, the little guys should do you just fine. The bigger ones are made for supporting heavier heavier stuff, but they're more invasive to the fish. This is going to make a big plop when it hits the water as to where this one's going to be kind of smaller. It's easier to manage as well. So once you have all your, your tackle, you're getting ready to go. you gotta get it, you got to get it set up. So I'm going to kind of show you here how to get a standard rig set up and show you the most important knot in fishing. A lot of people know it as just the fisherman's knot. Now, 
something to, to make sure before you before you start rigging up is the body of water you're in if you're allowed to fish barbs so that first barb is the one we're worried about the one on the point that keeps in the fish's mouth it, you can buy barbless hooks but if you buy if you buy a hook with barbs you can still use it you just got to pinch the barb and to do that you just take your pliers grab that guy and pinch them down kind of roll it around just to make sure you got it too simple too easy don't get caught with barbs where you're not supposed to trust me so once you've got your your hook ready to go we're going to we're going to use this in the way of the the hook line here this will be our main line. This is the one that's going to our rod and reel. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it through the loop and we're going to pull some slack. Now this line is now called our tag end and this is our main line. The main line goes back to the rod and reel. We're going to put it through the loop and then we're going to take this and we're going to wrap it. And we're going to wrap it five to seven times. I'm just going to do it for five times. Now after you've got your wraps, you're going to take your tag end and you're going to put it through the first loop that you made with your line. So this guy right here. I'm going to put it through. Now this is where a lot of people stop. This is the, this is the fisherman's knot. There's one step that will make your knot a little bit stronger and takes an extra half a second, if that. So instead of cinching it down here, we're going to take your tag and we're going to put it right through the loop we just made. And then you can kind of cinch it down a little bit, make it pretty. And then at this point, this is where you want to wet your knot. Now when you wet your knot, you're providing the lubrication in the line to cinch down as tough as it'll go, as, as hard as it'll cinch down and that's going to allow your knots to stay to stay where they need to be and not come out in the fish's mouth so then that's when we're going to tighten down and make it all pretty we're going to go ahead and do that very same thing i'm going to do it a little bit faster this time since i just showed it to you with the actual with the actual line here and if you grab a little tail of your tag end you can actually grab this knot on the hook and just spin it saves you time. Back through. And then through the loop we just made. And I'm going to wet. Wet it down and cinch it. Clip our tag. And now we've got the hook attached to the main line. We just need to add some weights. So a good starting point, got your hook. Go up about, about 12 inches is a good place to start. Then you grab your, your split shot weight, put it on, and just clamp it down. Now, your dentist is going to tell you not to do it, and I'm going to tell you not to do it, so you don't blame me, but I use my teeth. And a lot of people use their teeth. But, so your dentist doesn't call me, don't use your teeth, use your pliers. So what this is going to allow you to do is fish the bottom. So your weight is going to fall to the bottom of the river or the pond, and your bait's going to kind of just sit there as well. Now, if you're fishing in a pond that has some, some moss or some weeds or, or something that you want to get your bait above, what you can do is take your worm or your salmon eggs or whatever you want to do and put a little piece of a, of a marshmallow on the on the very tip and that'll allow your your bait to float up while your weight stays on the bottom and that'll get you above all that, all that vegetation you're trying to avoid if you want to go even higher than that you go from the top down so you're going to want to I would move your weight down a little bit and then attach your bobber so to attach these guys a little nub here you're just going to push that down and it exposes a little hook. 
that goes right over your line on the top and then you push it down again it exposes one on the bottom real simple real easy and you can adjust that to wherever you wherever you want it based on how far you want your bait to dangle from the bobber all right so the biggest question that I didn't answer yet it's it's often answered sarcastically um, but the question is where do I go fishing to catch fish and the answer is just go um, there's there's fish in most if not all water in Idaho um, you just gotta go and there's a couple things you can do to kind of better your chances once you find a body of water uh, for instance if you're looking at a river a couple of points that you're gonna want to kind of start out at uh, fish the pools for one uh, secondly look at the the seams of the current uh, the edges of the current and where the fast water meets the slow water so primarily with trout they're lazy all, all they do is sit on the bottom where in that slow water so they don't have to move very fast and wait for food to fall in their face and it's or or not move very far to get that food so they're they're real real lazy you just got to get the food near them and that'll give you the best chance if you're fishing still water uh, maybe for bass look for cover look for the the fallen trees or the concrete uh, structure that's in the water anything that looks like you're going to snag your line on it that's where the bass are uh, so you're if you're bass fishing just expect to be in the weeds a little bit and expect to be retying some things because uh, that's where they like to like to hang out one thing i do want to touch on is even if you're an exp experienced angler uh, is is proper handling of the fish this is a big a big issue it seems uh, in in the area and just with with inexperience people just don't know so um, when you're when you're catching a fish if you're if you're planning on taking it home that's wonderful you're completely as long as it's legal it's within your right do it um, I do it myself so just when you're when you're getting ready to dispatch the fish, when you're getting ready to kill it, do it as, as best as you can uh, in one fell swoop. If you got to get a bigger rock to hit it with or, you know, pliers or whatever you want to do, make it a good one, smack it right on top of the head, put it out. Um, you don't need to be bludgeoning it, uh, you know, 20, 35 times. So uh, make it a good one, make it count. Um, but if you're planning on taking the fish, uh, putting it back in the water and letting them go, there's some things to keep in mind to let that fish survive so somebody else can catch it. First thing is wet your hands. So fish have a protective slime, a slime coating on them that protects them from elements in the water. It insulates them, protects them from parasites and, and whatnot. Uh, and if you touch them with dry hands, that the slime coat will remove and they'll be, they'll be exposed. If you're going bass fishing and you want to uh, to hold the the bass by the lip like the pros, that's all fine and dandy. Uh, I don't see a problem with that unless you know it's some monster monster bass. You know, I'd say over three and a half pounds. You might want to start cradling and supporting its body as well. Um, don't squeeze the fish. Um, support it with two hands if you can. Um, and if you're lipping a bass, try to keep it at an angle that doesn't put a bunch of stress on the jaw. Uh, because if they're swimming around with a with a broken jaw, all the other fish are going to make fun of them, and they're just going to have a bad time, and they're going to feel they're going to feel bad about themselves. So, keep fish morale up. Don't break their jaw. Um, some fish are more resilient than others, but the biggest the biggest thing keep your fingers out of their gills. Uh, that's huge. The gills are how they breathe. Imagine me sticking my big old meat stick in your lungs. It's it sucks you know it may not the fish may not die right away um, it'll swim away strong but it may go belly up in five ten minutes you know who knows so just just keep your finger out of the gills it's real simple um, but that's that's about it guys um, I'm, I'm confident with this video you can take you zero to zero to fishing and and be able to do so with uh, with some confidence so uh, this is the first video in our in our little video library that I'm going to be putting together, it's gonna I'm gonna have some special guests come in, you know that 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 know more than I do uh, about certain topics, and they're gonna they're gonna teach some things. So um, let me know what you guys think of this. Um, if you guys want to leave some feedback in the in the comment section, uh, click the su subscribe button. That way, next time we post a video, you'll get a you'll get a notification. 
uh, give me some feedback you know good criticism bad criticism as long as it's honest you know if you're gonna tell me you're ugly that's fine uh, <laughs> do what you gotta do um, as long as it's honest if you really think I'm ugly tell me so uh, but with that thank you guys very much for tuning in and we'll see you next time